All opinions on the show are our own because we're some grown ass men. Welcome to another episode of the Team Lift Otaku Lounge with your hosts Zane Lopez and Roger McDaniel. Let's get right into it. That you can Google? <laughs> um, I want to say yes. I want to say yes. I was like, really? I had no idea that was something you could Google. You can. Uh, you can Google it. No, I'm not. You're not going to like the results? No, no. I've learned my <laughs> lesson about, about Google. Don't. Just because you think it don't mean you should Google it. Yeah, Rule 34 is a bitch. Yeah, because there is something out there for it. <laughs> You're going to find something, dog. So. All right. I got a horror stories. Get into it. Okay. Yeah. We're already into it, man. Yeah? That's okay. how this show starts. <laughs> we just start recording when we're in a conversation and people are like, well, what were they talking about Googling? None of your damn business. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't, don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> we tell you and you go Google it and then try to sue us for giving you that thought. Uh, so welcome back to another episode of Otaku Lounge. Man, been a while. Yeah. Hot been, minute. Hot minute. This is our wrap-up show for summer 2017. Gosh, bitch. Bro, summer was a chore. For you, I didn't watch literally <laughs> everything. I wasn't fucking... I didn't have a schedule or anything. I just watched it when the hell I wanted to watch it. Uh, yeah, I went in. I, that actually bit me in the ass, too, because I ended up having, spending like the last week or two literally catching up to half of the season. But Yeah, yo, you did. You and uh, I think you and her both had that same problem. Yeah. Y'all were trying to finish out everything, and I was done. Yeah. I, I was on a schedule, and I stuck to it. Now, to do my schedule, we're going to talk about it. I've watched 20 different series. You're crazy. This summer. Brandon, you're looking at me like, bro, you had no life. Exactly. That's some weeb shit. It was so, I was on some weeb. <laughs> like, I don't even know if there's a level above weeb, but. Did you see that? You didn't see that little infographic that uh, Kate put 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 out on her Facebook? No. I'll show you to to, to you later. There's like levels of weebdom. Mm-hmm. You're not quite to a general yet because you don't have a full back tattoo of your favorite idol from Love Live. But don't look down like that, like you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Nico, you're, not, Nico, you're, not quite, you're not quite there, but I think you're on the, like the soldier level. I, I damn near did get a Nico Nico knee oh tattoo my across my stomach like Thug Life. It was just gonna say Nico Nico knee. Oh my god. Yeah. I can't be with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon walks away. <laughs> I just thought that would have been a cool tattoo on my stomach, you know, written in that old English like Thug Life. Yeah, I ever tell you that I have a dog, a Japanese chin, whose name is Nico? No. He hates it whenever I pick him up and I make him do the little Nico Nico ni. He has no idea what it's from either. Like he's so detached from reality. He just knows he's gonna pick me up and make me do this stupid thing. And yeah, I hate he hates it. Oh, that's awesome. He's an amazing little puppy though. Oh man. Okay, so let's get into this. Summer 2017. I decided to watch 20 series. You're I crazy. kept them on a daily basis. I had a show for every day of the week. You are crazy. Yes. It was every day of the week I had a show. And then on Sundays, what I went back and did is I watched older series that I had never watched. So we can break this down by days, week, days of the week. Yeah. You, we just tell us, you just tell us what the hell you watched, and I will supplement it as best I can. Okay. <laughs> well, let's start with Monday. All right. Okay. So on Mondays, I watched Restaurant to Another World, uh, which I know you were a fan of. Ah, uh, big fan. And I watched Koi, uh, Koi to Uso. Which oh, is, was, you know, Love and Lies. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to watch that one. I just never did. <laughs> that was Anime Strike. Yeah. And which is why I'm never going to end up watching it. I, I mean, I'm, I'll probably watch it in the future. Like, I'll probably do what her's doing, where he's just waiting for it to come to video. Like, yeah, and he's going to buy all the box sets. Yeah. I, like him, I can't legitimize a double sub right now. Like, maybe in the future. But right now, no double subs. Oh, you can't, you can't say, hey, I'm going to pay for, you know. For Prime and then for Strike. I think it's like what eighteen bucks for both together because it's like nine ninety nine a month for Prime and then it's like five seven ninety nine. Oh yeah, you're right. It's five bucks. Shit. So it's only well, it's still fifteen. That's, bucks. that's a lot for a subscription. I mean, oh, I guess not because my Crunchyroll is like fourteen. What God's name are you doing? I have oh, premium. Did... <laughs> I have Crunchyroll oh. premium. Yeah, that's right. You, but you know, I looked at the Crunchyroll premium thing and I kept trying to argue that to myself and I kept going. I mean, outside of the discounts, I just for... wanted the fucking crown. Okay, true. That's true. I got the crown next to my higher lander. That's true. I can't say anything. <laughs> I got quiet as soon as you said that. So I was like, damn, you did get a crown. All right, so let's do this. 
Restaurant to Another World. Mm-hmm. I know that was a favorite for you. That was that's definitely a top three for me. I don't. I'd have to like rethink about the whole season again to figure out if it's my number one. But it's definitely two or three because I thought the animation was gorgeous. The there wasn't really a story, but each episode had a story, so it wasn't like one overarching story so much as like like, like stories encapsulated in twenty. 20- 21-ish minutes um, after you take out intro, outro. Mm-hmm. Um, the characters are amazing. Aletta was, is definitely a contender for waifu, but so is Kudo. Because whenever they introduce a petite little elf that speaks with telekinesis and is actually a dragon, your boy uh, had to change his pants. That, that was for you. That was for me. Oh, bro. But okay. I, also love the, I also love Aletta and her little goat horns. Yeah, I did too. She's she super kawaii, super y'all. Yeah. No, man, great series. I had a lot of fun with it. I love food animes. I do too, and this one especially, um, because it didn't like it didn't get you invested to the point where you had to know what happens next. It was more like for me, it was like it was like a relaxation kind of thing. Like it was almost like meditation for me. It was. Because like I didn't watch, I mean, I watched it because I enjoyed it. I watched it because all of the reactions that these patrons had to the food were very real like they ate they come to this restaurant once a week every week and they eat their favorite meal that's served there and they just they enjoy it the same way every time um one reaction in particular just killed me though it was uh the chicken curry reaction where the sea captain dude Mm -hmm. came in and tried that new curry dish uh one time and like went super saiyan or some shit and like little roosters came up Mm -hmm. yeah that i have that saved as a gif on on my google drive as well i went ahead and recorded that with obs ripped the ripped the uh, sound out and made a gif out of it because it was like the best reaction all season in the anime that's awesome i I can't say anything i loved it yeah i love that show uh it was every week it felt like it was it's like when you run into an old friend yeah and you just cherish that time with them and you just kind of get caught up and then you can't wait to see them again yeah that's what it was like for me yeah i can feel that i love that show man it was so relaxing and i would just sit there and i got into everybody's stories and you know you find yourself kind of rooting for the you know the arabian prince that kind of had the crush on oh yeah that was actually that was interesting because that one was one of the few things that did bleed in from episode from episode episode. episode. yeah i found myself rooting for him i said i just want them to get together and him to be happy with her yeah and and it was just (laughs) so much cool stuff but and it was just kind of watching the chef now what was kind of cool is at the end of it you know seeing how you know somebody from another world had came to our world to create that restaurant yeah so it was pretty awesome there was some some really cool stuff that I got out of it. Um, I love the series. I ended up messing around. I gave it a seven on Crunchyroll. That's a good. Yeah, I probably honestly I am I'm really bad at giving anything lower than a seven. Mm-hmm. Like my 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 rating scale for shows really should be six to ten because I have I've only given one show a five. And it wasn't even a show. It was an OVA, and it was Oraimo's OVAs. <laughs> but that's a whole other sweet discussion. Mm-hmm. This show, I would definitely give it a nine. Like, just it, it, it spoke to me in a way that no other anime can, because it just showcased a love for food that I've had since before. I wanted to do game development. Yeah, like I wanted to be a professional chef before I wanted to be a developer, and I love cooking. Yeah, so, I do too. The show definitely spoke to me super well. And I can't help loving cooking. I'm fucking Cajun. No, I love cooking. We love food. I'm, I'm fat, black, and grew up in the <laughs> South. Come on, bro. I throw down in the kitchen. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I gave it a seven. And, and the way I look at it, if you're on my anime list, they have their rating scale, which is what I use yeah. a lot of times. And I think we've talked about this on the show. I use their rating scale because it's so easy for me. But, yeah. yeah, that one I gave a seven. Now, the next show, uh, Love and Lies, Koi no Uso. Um, bro. This was my soap opera. This was my show. This was, this th- was wait. There was like three like soaps, wasn't there? Though there this, were this, three shows where I was kind of like, so these it. are battling to be my number <laughs> one. So, uh, restaurant to another world. If I had to pick a top five, it's in that top five. It did not make the top three because of this show. I believe you. Just I know I know you. <laughs> oh God, Quino. So Love and Lies was a soap opera. Tells the story of a Japan where people no longer get to fall in love their mates are chosen for them by the system oh so it's feudal japan 
Basically. So it's like it has this system, the red thread of fate system. And what it does is from the time you're in fourth grade all the way through high school, it's you're taking all these tests and personality tests and stuff, and it's finding your perfect mate for you to marry. So it's Match.com the anime. It was so Match.com the anime. But the thing is, you can't refuse the system. You're not supposed to refuse the system. It's communist match.com the anime. Yes. <laughs> and it was so much going on. And then super cute girls. Uh uh-huh. super cute guy for the lead characters. Mm-hmm. Um it was just like this is what you want in a soap opera. Good looking people who can't be with each other. So there's a struggle to want to be with each other. So is it soapy enough that they might dub it in Spanish and put it on Telemundo? It was so soapy that it already is there. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, this show was really good, and I loved everything about it. Plus, uh, our boy James Hurd, you know, he fell in love with Frederick. Yeah. And Frederick did the theme song to this. Frederick is pretty boss. Yeah, so their song, uh, Kanashi Orishi, is uh, the song that they did. Uh, or Kanashi or- Orishi. Kanashi? Uh, yeah. I forget what that means. I, I need to know my dang self. Kanashin. I think Kanashin is like how you say you're happy. Oh, no. Shiwa, shiawase. Mm-hmm. I think. I am forgetting my Japanese. I need to take my lessons again. Yeah, you better step it up, man, because I'm going <laughs> to go to Japan. But there it is. Kanashi yeah. Urashi. I'm pretty sure Kanashi is some emotion. I don't know what Urashi is. But yeah, man, I love it. I bought the song. Yeah. That's how much I loved it. Damn. I went out and bought the song. The song was amazing. The show was great. I ended up giving it an eight. It was part of my one-two punch on Mondays. I would go watch Restaurant to Another World and then go right into. So you would relax and then you'd get into like nail-biting drama. Well, there was more of a comedy oh, drama. Okay. Yeah, it was some drama to it, but it was so. It was a dramedy more. It was, it was so just lovey-dovey A soap too. dramedy. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> loved it. That's awesome. Yeah. So Tuesday nights. Uh, on Tuesdays, I did three shows. All three of these are winners. Uh, in oh, another world with my smartphone. This one has a lot of fucking hate on it. Sh- Shuri Dairy Children. That one has a lot of love on it. And New Game Season That one two. has all of the love on it. Okay, so this was my Tuesday night schedule. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and get into In Another World with my smartphone. Now, people have been listening to our show. Yeah. Just heard a show recently where we had the uh, Oliva Brothers on here. Yeah. And Angel basically shit all over this show yeah he hates the show for good reasons i guess because it is like the character is of course a blank slate Mm -hmm. as is everybody as is like 99 percent of males in a harem anime like there's very few harem anime where the main character is a male and has a personality um and like i don't know he he shit on it but for good reason i and i don't i don't know i don't watch anime to, to analyze it I watch it to enjoy. break away from re- reality and enjoy something that's not fucking like some rehash story from our Western media that's been replayed a different way for the last fucking 12 decades. Like, mm-hmm. there's no originality here. Go to Japan, just everywhere. So, I don't know. Eh, that's, that's, I mean, but you know, here's the thing. We, if you watch a lot of anime, it starts to rehash eventually. All harems are basically the same. Yeah, no. That's... When he shit on it, I was like, I couldn't even hate him. <laughs> I enjoyed the show. And I like the show. Yeah. But I know at the same point, uh, t- uh, he was right. All harem is the same. Yeah. Blank slate guy, no fucking personality, and every woman falls in love with him. And it makes no sense to you, the viewer, if you watched. You like you start to question it. The more you start to become a critic, you hate to be that guy. But you start to look at it and go, why do they love this asshole? Because he's a blank slate. Yeah. I mean, in their world, this one guy comes out of nowhere, can use every type of magic, can learn any fucking magic he wants. He's pretty much like the ideal man in their world. So it makes sense in context. Yeah, and If you the take thing. the same kind of person and just throw him out in the middle of Austin and you're like, all right, you're going to go get laid now. Uh, yeah, good fucking luck. Yeah. And the thing was, <laughs> like, like on this show, Angel said this. There was no issue. There was no drama. Well, yeah, and everything he could solve. He was the s- solvent for every problem in their universe. Yeah, like Angel put it best this way. He said, um, "You don't introduce a smartphone as the primary plot device, and in this anime, it was the central plot device. It was what every every single every single issue was solved because of his smartphone. Mm-hmm. And apparently, you just don't do that." 
Yeah, and he got killed. Here's the thing. He gets killed. So for a lot of you who didn't watch the show, we'll break it down. Guy gets killed by God, struck by lightning. God Uh, says it was an accident. (laughs) I'm going to let you come back to any world you want to go to, and I'll let you, you know, take anything with you. And the guy goes, what about my smartphone? I'm going to hype your smartphone up, and I'm going to perk out all your stats. Yeah. So your charm is off to, you know, it's a 10. So he basically drops him into a video game world. You know, like an art fantasy RPG world. Yeah, essentially. Gives him his smartphone. And then gives him God's phone number. He can call God directly if he ever gets in trouble. Yeah, and he doesn't need to. Like, he, I don't think he ever calls God directly. I think Kami-sama calls him, right? Uh, he does call God. At episode 9 or 10, remember when he cuts to, I got a question about love. Oh, that's right. Oh, That's the yeah. only time he called God. <laughs> God called him, and then he called God one time. Yeah. Because you don't understand women. Yeah. Which is... Which is the entire show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I was going to call God, that's my question, too. I'm a bit, God, I got some questions. Do bitches be tripping? <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> yeah. I have questions, God. So, yeah. I mean, that was really the whole premise of the show. And yeah. It, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was very bland in the plot and in the whole, like here's how we're going to solve every issue. But at the same time, it was kind of like comedic relief. Yeah. It was like, it was like if Konosuba and re zero kind of came together. Cause they're both isekai anime. They're both another world. Subaru has a smartphone in re zero and Konosuba is just fucking hilarious. They and, were and very it, much the same. Yeah. Two blended. Like I just, really, I think we said that at the start of the season, I got in, I said, it feels like if re zero was a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And a harem, because ReZero is definitely not a harem. It's a three-way, but it's not a harem. Yeah, that's true. He even told Room that she's his second best. He was like, you're my second girl. You're my sad bitch. Not literally said that, but he yeah, pretty much said that. He did pretty much <laughs> say that. I really want a season two, but Kadokai was not going to indulge me. Yeah, I, I gave this show a six. Oh, I it can, was fine. That's a fair That's a fair grade. I was like, it's fine. It's just there to entertain me. Yeah, it's there for funnies, and that's about it. Yeah. I mean, uh, funnies and cute anime girls, but that's all anime nowadays, so... Yeah, that's so true. You don't really have to watch good anime to get the cuties. Yeah. Shuri Dury Children, on the other hand. That one had the cutes and the plots. And loved every freaking <laughs> character. Romantic uh, comedy that actually knew to be funny. Yeah. That's what, what more could I ask for? Yeah. It knew to be funny. Hey, yeah, we're going to actually do a romantic comedy and be funny. That one was cute as hell. I loved it. Uh... On this one, what are those, like five-minute plots? Five-minute episodes? Maybe seven? I th- yeah, I think it was five-ish. They usually center on two to three couples per episode. Right. It was like two to three minutes per couple, so it was probably like... Maybe nine? It may have maxed out at nine? I think it was n- I think it was like a seven... You know, we can probably just freaking find it, but yeah, I think it was like a seven or eight-minute per episode anime. You know, you're right. We probably could look this. Yeah, up. I mean, my anime list tells you how what the what the runtime is or what the duration for all these shows are. I don't even know if it's actually on my watch list. I was not tracking everything properly, even though I told everybody here. Oh wait, I am tracking it. Here it is. <laughs> oh, twelve minutes per episode. There you go. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense though because it comes from a four comma, so it's not it's not got a, like a massive like log of manga or light novels to pull from. It's literally a fucking four panel comic like that they pulled this from so all of these reactions they may have even had to expand on from the comics because four panels is not a lot and a lot of the interactions in the anime uh, would take a lot more than four panels but oh my god yeah no it was hilarious loved it i enjoyed it it may have even turned me on to romantic comedies a little bit more mm-hmm. like because it was hilarious a lot of guy <laughs> friends watched this show a lot of my guy friends watched it and were like this show is fucking hilarious. And if you were looking at um, Crunchyroll, did mm-hmm. their Twitter post and say, hey, what was your favorite show uh, of this summer 2017? And I said, I'm really going to miss those Shuri Dury children. And I had more people like my comment as a reply to Crunchyroll than anything. <laughs> and I was just like, I know I'm not alone on that show. Shuri Dury children had a following. Yeah, I personally gave it an eight. Oh, I thought you would have given it like a nine. That's a very good. It was a very good. Eight's very good. I thought it was very good. I I loved everything about it. Um, I went ahead and gave it the eight. Nice. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about, though. Is I can't. I, I rarely will give under a six. Like if I had to rate that show, I'd probably have given it a nine because I'm really bad at ratings. 
Oh, no. I always feel bad giving you a low rating. And, like, if I enjoy the show, it's, it's most likely going to be 8, 9, or 10. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drop some bombs on here. <laughs> There's going to be something that goes under the 5 on I my list. I believe you. Okay. Uh, new game, season 2. Was I went into it a fan from season one. I had to grind out the first season and then watch catch up to season two, and I have zero, I have zero disappointment, zero, like, uh, what's the word? Um, regret. Oh yeah, no regrets, no regrets, no regrets at all. I loved the fuck out of that show. Yoon is my favorite just because of her freaking <clears throat> her accent. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, your girl, um, Yumiko. Mm-hmm. I learned to love second season really well because how much more she was in this show one and two she's a grown-ass woman that's a grown-ass woman she's a grown-ass woman and i loved her like of all the characters her reactions to things were the best because of how serious she was and then like how like they then they just made her fucking moe for two seconds to do a reaction it was fucking hilarious bro she if you think about it she was in the airsoft she was super serious she was a hard worker she was very mature she kept everybody else in line, and I realized, I said, I love her, but you know who would be her perfect mate? Reed. Yeah. Reed and Yumiko should be a couple. Reed, you got to date a 2D girl. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, her and Reed would be a couple. That's and okay. I love Reed, and I realized, <laughs> maybe I love Reed too much, and this is him. <laughs> that, that's funny. That, yeah, that's Reed and anime. That's Reed and anime. Yeah, he's Female you. Reed. So check it out. Because of that show, and I'm probably being a little bit biased. Because I loved everything about it. Yeah. It's about young women working for a game development company and trying to launch each season. They're launching a different game. Yeah. And it's, you know, the trials and tribulations of people on the art team and the development team and the debuggers. And it's it's really just a slice of life. It's not really a drama, not really a comedy. It's just a slice of life. And sometimes life is funny. Sometimes it's hard and sad. I love this show. Yeah, that show got unsurprisingly... Uh, like real that one episode like episode 10 i think it was near Bro, near the end of the season there here's the thing a I lot of people don't people realize people about it fight every time if you watch that show they were always real you really think about it they never really did fantastical things you know people fighting to be recognized and you know the game company having to we're going to bank on a name instead of giving you credit for something. Oh, yeah. No, every, I think, I, well, I think part of the reason is because the uh, the coma and the whole story was made by a guy who worked in the industry. And he's like basing the the, the story and the and the art and the manga and all that sh- shit off of his experiences in, Working the, in, in the industry. And he worked for Trice. Yeah. So like yeah. that guy making the show, no, or not show, making the story and the manga and the four coma knows what the hell he's talking about and makes a very real interpretation of an unrealistic scenario because i'm sorry to say this people but you ain't going out of high school to go and be an artist for a game dev with no fucking experience and then get taught to do 3d on the job just gonna say that what well, here's the thing though he was saying that was a that, little salty for me he said that there was a lot of times that they do hire those kids right out of high school because that was one of his things Getting hired out of high school. Maybe in Japan. Yeah. In, in America? Japan, in America, no. no. But in Japan, no. they would hire these kids out of high school because we can pay them low and work them hard. Yeah. Well, in America, we would love to pay low and work hard, but they would rather do that after you finish up high, uh, college, have, you know, thousands of dollars of, of uh, loans and uh, have, you know, experience under your belt. Then, oh, they, yeah, then no. they'll pay you shit. Yeah, and then yeah, and what was really cool about it is that it really gave you an idea into the whole Japanese game culture and the sleeping under your desk and you know the long hours, the grinds and stuff. It was really a great series, and I loved it for that. I I think that show made me more of a slice of life fan. I like slice of life. I loved slice of life after that. I want to say that one is also my top three, um, probably number one, but. We'll cover all that we'll later. We'll look at that. Keep, I'm going to keep that in mind. Yeah. On me, I gave it an 8, though. It was only a very good. I did not give it the 9. I did not give it the 10. You know what I gave it? You gave it a 10? No, I gave it a 9. You did? <laughs> I didn't think it was a pure masterpiece because there wasn't any any uh, any GL. I was mm-hmm. like, I was just waiting for, uh, what's their names? Um, 
the director and the producer well second season art director and producer um oh i can't think of the name but i know who you're talking about yeah the the two girls who have like the most suggestive relationship in the entire show mm-hmm. i was just waiting for something like give it to me give it to me oh yeah you really thought it was gonna go yuri didn't you yeah i always thought every season that it would because you could tell she really yeah she had a thing for her. yeah she was in love with her yeah but she also knew to let her go to go be free yeah and I don't think other I don't think old girl was a lesbian either. No, but now she's a free bird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, she is. In France, no less. So yeah. Hopefully, she has a dad who's been with the FBI because that's a bad place to be, from what I've seen in movies. Yeah, you know what? Here's what I kept thinking when she was going. She's going to France. I kept saying she's going to work for Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be on the Assassin's Creed game. Because remember, because they kept saying, she's working a, this company makes a whole bunch of different types of games. Went, she's going to work for Ubisoft. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, who else is a French developer with studios everywhere and making all kinds of fucking games? No, there's just Ubisoft. You went to work for Ubisoft. That's fucking hilarious. I caught that as soon as they said it. Maybe that's because <laughs> we work in the video game industry. Yeah. But as soon as they say it, she's moving to France, but this company makes all kinds of games and they have offices everywhere. She's going to work for Ubisoft. Man, I uh, wish I could work for you. No, actually, no, I don't. No, you don't. I mean, if I was doing like stuff on the programming side, yeah. I don't want to get bitched at for server issues because they actually have server issues. We know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. As a fan of their games. But I will say this. I just beat uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Beat it like 100% of it? I'm at 95% Good right God. now. I only got three more trophies to get. I love that game. You're a monster. Yeah. I 100% at every region in the game. So I'm, I'm about to, yeah, I only got to do... Three more things and I'll be done. Uh, Still, let's move it on. Wednesdays. Wednesday nights was the night where this is like all the meh. All the meh? Meh. What what do we got on meh? It's bland as hell on Wednesday. I watched it. I watched everything on Wednesday night. None of this stuff was amazing to me. Here comes the fives and below. (laughs) Yeah, we're going. We'll see. So, first show up. Netzua Trap NTR. Uh, That wasn't meh, though. That was like, why? Uh, yeah it was just like the whole okay it, it was like literally the entire time i watched that i was like in, internal monologue on my knees screaming at the sky with my arms up why i said that, that was me the entire that was time me a lot with this show <laughs> it was like wait a minute so we have it's the it's it's yuri or lesbian what we would call a lesbian soap opera it was definitely a soap opera with lesbian overtones. yeah it was it was yuri as fuck oh big time so here's what happens we have these two girls that have been childhood friends and the young sweet innocent girl is about to get her first boyfriend and her friend tells her hey i'm going to help you practice so that you're not so nervous on your dates with him and then practice led to her sticking her tongue in her mouth and playing with her boobs and trying to finger and then she's all confused about her feelings. Am I a lesbian? And, you know, yeah. am I cheating on my boyfriend? And then yes. <laughs> one boyfriend was really innocent and sweet and kind, and he was getting cheated on. And the other guy knew that these two were being lesbians, and he was manipulating them, and he was abusive. He was, wow, his show had a lot going on. Yeah, it was painful. It was crazy. It was that guilty pleasure for a lot of us. Yeah. You it, know wasn't, it wasn't like something that I wanted to watch but it was like something that i was like i just have to see how this goes like i have to see what the worst possible outcome would be uh in a what seems to be a perfect relationship like i mean i guess there could be worse outcomes i mean there, there could be far worse outcomes but when, oh yeah when you have like a perfect relationship and then your girl and her bestie are like over there making out and your girl's not really sure what the hell she's doing anymore kind of like you know mind going blank what's going on yeah, I mean, it was I'm just... surprised that that didn't just, like... That I'm surprised that the writers didn't just decide, you know what, we've gone really far. Let's fuck it. We're going to make it a hentai. We don't, we don't need this to be in the mass audience. Bro, there were some times where you were watching an episode and you know some stuff was cut out. Oh, yeah. You know some stuff was cut out. Like the, the bathhouse scene. Oh, God, yeah. There yeah. was some stuff that they cut. Like, they had to butcher that show to, edit, to show it in the U.S. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. On Crunchyroll, period, because Crunchyroll doesn't show hentai. Yeah. Boy, that show was butchered. Crunchyroll does have a account setting where you can show, like, R+, plus on their website, I think, but I'm not sure that they have anything that's more than maybe some opi, some light nipple or something like that. They don't really do it, Dota. They yeah. could do it. Yeah. But they don't. No. I mean, it's fine. I don't really give a shit. There's a um, website for that. <laughs> 
I'm gonna tell you how bad this show was. How bad? How bad? Everybody was it? watched it, but its overall score on my anime list was a five point five. Good God! I it mean, was terrible. Yeah, it the was, show was terrible. It was pretty bad. It was bad. I uh, what'd you give it? I gave it a six. Oh, okay, it was fine. Yeah, it was meh. It was meh. Yeah, I mean, I could have probably like the five. I'm not scared to go back and give it a five. I'm like. I gave it a six, but that's probably why it's got a 5.53. I gave it a six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just one of those things. It was just a guilty pleasure. And I watched it, and I was like, there's nothing about this show that is amazing. The show is kind of tacky and terrible. You know what my guilty pleasures are with anime? What's that? Harem. Okay. That's just my guilty pleasure. Like, I wouldn't count this as a guilty pleasure so much as a... I. It hurts so bad. I have to see what the fuck happens next, kind of thing. Like, I I think we did watch it just to like, where does this car wreck in? Yeah, pretty. It's yeah, it's exactly like that. It's like you're seeing a car wreck from the outside, and you can't look away. You really you just have to see who the fuck's head comes off first. And I think that was the thing. Like James Hurd watched it too, and and I think we he kind of said, "Bro, what what the hell are we watching? I don't know." <laughs> We just was we that, gotta figure out where was this that goes. one he finished or was that one he cut off because he, he I did don't do, know if he tapped out on that one. He did do his summer wrap up episode and I watched it, but I don't remember what the hell his. Uh, his I gotta find out if he tapped out on that one. Yeah, find out if that episode's still on YouTube. This one, how'd you met they no gal? This was a mess for you. Oh wait, this one I remember why this one became this, a mess. How'd you met they no like, gal? You liked it. You liked it up until like episode eight or nine, right? I liked it a lot. Up until that one There point. was one character who I hated. And, and the reason I hated the character, he's actually on our cringe episode. I talked about Hajimete Nogao because it had a character who was basically a child molester. I mean, that's what he is. A real life lolicon in and out. Yeah, he was a real life guy who liked underage girls. Well, I guess lolicon is not a fair word because lolicon just means you like girls with little figures. No, he liked little he kids. He liked little girls. Yeah, so, he really did like little kids. I don't know what the fuck you would call that. A child molester. Oh yeah, no yeah. Sure. That's I mean, what like, I'm gonna call. It. I don't think that there. I don't think that there is an anime term for that for how, because of how bad it is. Yeah, he was a fucking child molester, and they tried to play a child molester for jokes. Yeah, that's not funny. It was not funny. His character ruined it. Uh, Belly, who has a young niece, you know me having five daughters, could not find humor in this guy. Yeah. He great episodes were ruined when he would come on the screen, and then episode. Eight or nine, the fool gets a job at a daycare to pay for his summer trip, and I was fucking disgusted. Yeah, that was and the I, episode I was referring to. <laughs> yeah, and at that point, I was like, this show will never be better than a fine. I really wanted to give it worse than that. I think the other characters, because they limited his time, I didn't punish the whole show. because, But the writing for that one character, if they were to have killed him off in the third episode, I would have gave that show an eight. Goddamn. I mean, I feel it. I feel that. Yeah, he I was just think, terrible. God damn, that, that difference. Yeah, it was a huge, huge difference. I didn't watch the show, but honestly, just based on him, I probably would rather not. I I couldn't recommend the show to people. Yeah. Like, the people who I knew watched it, we all kind of said, we're going to watch it, and we're going to figure it out. You know, it was one that we knew at the start of the season we were going to go in on. It. The premise looked cool about a guy who, once again, out of his league, dating out of his league, gets the hot chick. Dharma and Greg, the anime. You know, it's, <laughs> it's going to be funny. It'll be cool. You know, Ross and Rachel, the anime. So it was going to be great. The the blah guy finally gets the hot chick. Dharma and Greg meets to catch a predator. Yeah, that's what it was. Rip. Yeah, rest in peace. I want no part of this. <laughs> uh, I gave got? it a six. Then this next show, I never told you guys I watched it. Uh-huh. What? what, what? What? I never told you, keep you guys secrets? I, was, I did not mention Everybody I this. is bearing witness to this. Coach keeps secrets. Yeah, I watched this show, and when people were like, I never mentioned it. Like, when I would talk to you guys, like, hey, I'm watching 20 series. I never once said the <laughs> name of this series. What the hell is this? Uh, Pikataru no Lullaby Lullaby. What the fuck is this? Is this is it Magical Girls? No, you know who Pikataru is? <sighs> Pin. I got pineapple. Are you serious? Pineapple pin. That guy? Yeah. Yeah, he had an anime. That's hilarious. Why didn't you tell me about this? Bro, and it's, his shit was so I would have loved it. Okay, so And I would have shown Warren, and Warren would have loved it. Oh, my God. This show was... I would tell you. So, this guy gets <sighs> an anime. And then he plays all the characters on oh the show. Oh, my God. He's the voice of every character on the show. Oh, my God. They're three-minute episodes. And to make it better... Oh, my they're fairy tales from like when we were kids. Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk. 
the X in the lake. Somebody needs to like tell me why this Coach the ain't sh- gonna share his fucking funny enemy. Dude, this shit was insane. Okay, there was one part where uh, like he would be it was just him in weird situations like Pikataru just, would show up in these fairy tales and they'd be like Is he green screened in? No, like okay. it would be an anime <laughs> drawing of so him. It'd be, even, it'd be even better if he was green screened in. Oh, bro, here's the best part. And he just starts doing his little jig. Here's the best part. It was like his character. It wasn't like a normal anime. It was like hand drawn characters, and they, they like he'd be like, this. <laughs> like they moved a little stick figure, like they moved a little piece of paper animated oh. of it for him talking. Like, what do you do it? It's like a little doing? like puppet show kind of like. It was. It was. You got to watch it one time. Like a little stick but puppet show. I was on the episode one time, and like he was. They were, it was a thing going, there was a running joke where he would say something and then Picataro was like the boy was speaking into the canyon. He'd go, hello, what up? <laughs> what? I, I said, hello, what up? Oh my God. And then he'd be like, hip hop, what side? Oh <laughs> I was like, what the hell am I watching? Bro. But on that third episode when they did that and then they started doing this to what side, hip hop. What up? And I was, and then they would do this depth thing, and it was all animated. I was like, "Well, this is my show now." <laughs> what the hell? I'm stuck. I can't I believe no, that you hid this from me. I watched this thing, and I loved it. It was the worst. Okay, animation terrible. Well, but the comedy was on freak. Like it was so subversive. It looked like if Tim and Eric made an anime, this would be what they okay. would have done. <laughs> they would have got Picataro and Don't made give this. Them ideas. They this might, was the anime they, they would have made. They might destroy the world. Yeah, bro. It was everybody so, would die laughing. But here was the thing: it was hilarious every episode. And then, like even now, he's got this. They got like the OVAs are playing on. Uh, these were the web ones. There were three episodes that played only on the web, and they're playing those right now on Crunchyroll. All of them are still there. Pikataru well, no lullaby, lullaby. I will. Uh Probably be indulging in that for a little bit later on. Bro, it's so... I promise you, I Dude, watched it, so and first, I don't know why I watched it. First of all, after I finish watching it, we need to start doing hello. <laughs> oh, bro, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. It just that weird call and response episode, when you see it, you're going to be like, we're going to be doing that to each other. Bro, I, we need to get everybody in the crew watching that episode, watching that show... And then this will just be our thing at con, so we'll just call out, hello, what up? <laughs> yeah, what up? <laughs> Everybody will be like, what did he do? <laughs> There'll be one person that watched Picataro, and they'll know, I know what they're doing. And he'll be like, West Side. And I will go, yeah, he's in. He knows. He knows. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, the first person that hears us do that, and they go, West Side, I will be like, that person's in. That's going to be our call at A&T and Ikikun. Okay, there we go. Was, Hello. What up? We gotta make Reed watch it. Oh God, I will send you both that episode. You guys have to see this one. I'm about it. Cause man, it was just so freaking hilarious. Tell me you gave that higher than a six. I uh, I messed around on that one. Uh, I didn't rate it because you know they were still doing the OVA. Uh, okay, okay. But I still have. I'm so in love with it. No. I can honestly tell you, if I had to rate it right now, it's gonna get an eight. Nice. Is gonna get it. just because even though it wasn't traditional anime and the animation isn't that great, it's the freaking comedy and the fact that Pikataru. I mean, we've talked about that before. Like the animation doesn't always make the anime perfect. Like oh god, yeah. Like Shin Chan animation's pretty damn awful, but it has like some of the best poop humor in anime. Some period. Some of the funniest jokes you will ever hear. The best, it's- the best elephant penis jokes ever. Oh, yeah. What does it take <laughs> to be a man? A penis? Yeah. Come on, the man song? Come on, bro. They had a song about being a man and a penis on that anime. Yeah. Yeah. They had a lot of penis on that anime. Yeah, it was. There was a lot of swing and wang in that <laughs> one. But I still loved it. Yeah, Picatar No Lullaby Lullaby was the show I watched after I was through with all the men. Like, I would watch it last because it would make me laugh and forget <laughs> all the man I had just watched. Ah, uh, man, I can't believe you hid that from me. Bro, it was, my, it was my Wednesday night gym. Like, there were times where I would be sitting down there. Like, I think one time I took a call and I went, hello, my name is Roderick. <laughs> 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 I caught myself doing, oh. hello. And I was like, that was a really long hello. You got to quit watching this anime <laughs> before coming to work. Uh, yeah, now you're thinking. I remember that fool, dude. <laughs> yeah, 
Bro, I sit right across from yeah. you. I remember everything. Yeah, so that's like, hello. That's where it came from. That's what up? <laughs> what up? <laughs> okay, uh, Thursday nights. Thursday nights was probably second favorite night of the week. Second favorite? Maybe third. I'm going to say Saturdays was probably my second favorite. Mm. But we'll get into that. Yeah, we. Were, I'm going to say Tuesdays were probably my favorite. Yeah. Monday was my second. Yeah. That's a restaurant to another world. So, so let's say Thursday was my third favorite. Okay. Okay. Thursdays. Gamers. Yes. Convenience store boyfriends. Wait, how is gamers not your favorite? Oh, we're going to get into this. Okay. So we're going to get into this. So gamers <laughs> and convenience store boyfriends. I think I think I know why gamers was not your favorite. Oh, uh, I it? mean, shock you guys. Okay, We're going to get into this. But as a show, yeah. gamers, romantic comedy. Yeah. Amazing comedy. Yeah. Great couples. Yeah. Well animated. Hilariously uh, choreographed, I would say. Oh, my God. Songs were catchy as hell. Yeah. All the graphics is one of the few shows where I watched it all the way through. Yeah. Beginning chorus. Like, I'd never fast forward it through the opening song, and I always watch through the credits. And I took a screenshot of every one of those ending pictures. Yes. I, I watched got through 1080p all of them. backgrounds if you want <clears throat> my boy. Yeah, man. I loved all those. And so, <laughs> this show was, if you're going to make a romantic comedy... Yeah. I think you should watch this show and study this show. Yeah. Because this is how you do it. Yeah. It appealed to Western sensibilities of romantic comedies. Yeah. And as a series, to not, to be able to do that for 12 episodes. Okay. Let's be fair. They did it for 11 episodes. Yeah, they did it for 11. 11 episodes. Because the last episode was good. I feel like the last episode was a satire. It was. It was. It okay. The last episode never resolves any of the issues that we watched all season. Yeah. But it felt like it was an OVA where they were just like, "Hey, here's the extra episode." Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. I mean, they kind of they somewhat resolved. They pretty much resolved the overarching conflicts by episode eleven anyway. Like they were pretty sure where they were at the Disneyland. Yeah. 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 Where we knew who the couples were going to be. Yeah. Where they finally like. People were, st- first of all, people were done like, oh my God, he might be doing her. She might be doing him. She might be doing them. Like that seemed to resolve itself whenever everybody was coupled up. Fireworks were going off. And then, uh, what's her name? Uh, the blue haired one. She was my favorite just because of how she, how she spoke to Cause she said Desu Desu. And I was like, oh, that's so fucking cute. Yeah. Um, the pink hair one I thought was the cute one, man. Oh, the one with the, like the, the main forehead? guy's girlfriend. Her forehead? Yeah. Because yeah. remember, she used to be like she was a nerdy girl, and then she thought he liked flashy girls, so she got contacts, dyed yeah. her pink, and became real flashy. And it was these real couples. Yeah. Like, these couples actually talked the way I would expect high school romances to go. Yeah. That awkwardness, but they played it for laughs, but it felt genuine. It felt real. Like, I never listened to any dialogue on that show and thought, Duh. no yeah. high schooler would say that. Yeah, no, and like... uh I don't know what's his name the 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 friend um, the guy who was with the pink hair uh, he might have actually been my favorite character just because of how freaking conniving he was the entire time. <laughs> oh my god! He was trying to hook up all the couples. He, he was trying to hook him up with one girl, and he was like, "Oh wait, this girl's better for him." Oh wait, hold up. Oh wait. Oh, this will be good. Like the entire fucking show, and he ended up backing himself into a corner with how much time he spent with the girls trying to get him with main dude. Like, oh my god. That show had hilariously perfectly balanced drama, like yeah, because everybody it, it was generated, all misunderstanding, and it created itself. It it felt natural. It wasn't just like here's four people or here's five people thrown into a situation, lock the doors, and let's see what happens. It was like a natural flow of drama. It was over the top sometimes. Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night's Dream was a comedy of errors. Uh huh. Gamers was a comedy of errors where yeah. misunderstandings and relationships and there was all this romance and hormones flying, but people just I think so and so's doing this with so and so and it was all these misunderstandings. Um Yeah, no, it was it was definitely hilarious. The misunderstandings part, like it's uh it's that special kind of cringe. Like it's not like it's not like uh Watamote kind of cringe. It's mm-hmm. not like uh Oremo kind of cringe. It's like it's like I was cringe laughing. Oh yeah. Like I was like, oh why? Ha, ha. Like it was just like I was I was just like, why don't you understand? How could you mess this up? You could have her. Yeah. She loves you. Quit screwing up. Yeah. Yeah. That, I love that show. Cringe. I cringe laughed my entire way through it. I'm gonna tell you right now. Shocker of the night. I gave it a nine. Oh my goodness. It was a nine. I, I could I can, not 
I would discount it's 10 just based on the last episode, even though I'm aware that the last episode has to be some form of satire. That is the reason it's not a 10 was the last episode was just like, I was so close to, I don't give out a lot of 10s. Yeah. It's just something I don't do. Like you Did have you give to your be name a, a 10? Ma- huh? Did you give your name a 10? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Your name got a 10. Yeah. Uh, Akira got a 10. Um, uh, perfect blue got a 10 is I give 10s to classics. Yeah. This was a damn near modern day classic. Yeah. The only downside was they like, I, I really do feel like the last episode would have fit if they spread that dialogue out throughout the show, or at least spread it out with the season with an episode that had more of the same drama, but they resolved the drama in episode 11. I so think they, they just really, needed one last episode. They either needed one last episode or they, the, I don't know. Can we spoil it? Can we just talk about what episode 12 is about? But it's about DLC. Yeah, they just talk about DLC. Like, the entire episode is them trying to legitimize DLC to pink hair because she's not a gamer. They're just trying to legitimize But at the same time, it speaks money. to them about the relationships, too. Yeah. So DLC was also a metaphor about their relationships. Yeah. But it felt like it was almost satirical in that they talked about extra shit not necessary for the base shit. And they put this extra episode that was not necessary for the rest of the show. Exactly. So it was very satirical. And I, I felt like... It was like, like our I'm, tongues firmly I'm, planted in our cheek in this episode. I'm, and we're aware of it. I'm so. really, really, really on edge about whether it's a 9 or a 10. Just because like I'm a, that episode's aware of itself. And it's there for a reason. It's not just bullshitting. However, that episode did not satisfy me enough. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, you nailed it. This show, it was freaking a amazing ride. You gave me eleven episodes that were amazing, <sighs> and then you give me this twelfth episode, which why the writing is so freaking sharp and on point and so amazing. Like any show, the writing in the twelfth episode was like the best seasons of Seinfeld. It was an episode about nothing. Yeah, but it worked, and the writing was sharp, and the jokes were. Boom, boom, boom. And if from a gaming, I mean, if you're a gamer or play games and you purchase DLC, everything they said made sense to you. Or didn't. Yeah. Because some you, people are you, gamers that don't like DLC. Or you realize the hypocrisy of it. Yeah. You realize <laughs> the hypocrisy of, you know, I've, I've done what they're talking about. Yeah, I like the part where the two guys are both like, I would buy a swimsuit DLC. And I'm over here, like, raising my hands slowly. Me too. Because <laughs> I, I, I own some. I'm not going to lie. Hyper Dimension Neptunia has a bunch of uh, certain DLC that I own. Just uh, going to leave that there. You do with it as you please. You're just going to put it out there, huh? I mean, I am I weave out all day, every day. Y'all should see my bedroom. Man, you know, that's what I like about you. You have no shame. I don't have any shame. I've shamed myself out in middle school. I'm done with that. You were just like, no, I'm just telling you where it is. I'm a grown ass man. I do what the fuck I want. I, I tell you how it is and you ain't got to like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, that's that. what I love about you, man. You just, I don't give a damn. For real. Um, I just got to find a girl who don't want to give a damn with me. I hope you find that. I do, too. I really do want you to find that. <laughs> What's next? What's uh, next? We're on Thursday. Oh, Convenience Store Boyfriends. Oh, I didn't watch that one. I Con- wanted to. It's on my list, so I'll probably catch up uh, in the in like the between. Like uh, once I Once I'm caught up with everything every week. This season, I'm probably going to go back and watch some of last season that I missed. Convenience Store Boyfriends was a little bit different. Tell I'm me how. I'm just going to tell you. Tell me how. Uh, Did they do things in the convenience stores? Uh, Were they actually boyfriends? Were they like, the girls like went to the convenience stores to talk to certain guys, and they were like, oh, he just gave me back my change and gave me two extra yen, and he must like me. No, it was really weird. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, I made a Twitter post, and, then, and on my Twitter post, I said, this should be called Dawson Creek the Anime. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Uh, and, okay, here's oh, why. Shit. So, it wasn't that the, the boys worked at a convenience store, but on their way to high school, there was this convenience store. And they always would meet there for drinks or after school or before school for coffee and stuff. So, the convenience store was just a backdrop. Yeah. But the boys were always there for drinks and it became a meeting place after school where they could kind of hang out and talk, you know, before going home. And it was a soap opera. It was a drama. And it's the classic anime drama where boy meets girl, boy's too nervous to tell girl he likes her. Uh, Boy's best friend likes a girl that's totally nothing like him. You know, so here's how it broke down. You had the main character who liked this girl who was quiet. He was quiet. She was good in school. He was good in school. They're both very attractive. He's just too nervous to tell her that he's loved her all his life. Okay. Then his buddy, who's loud and boisterous and on the soccer team, is in love with the class rep. Uh, 
and the class rep's super serious and stern and not allowed to date. Hmm. And As he's in love are. with her. So, you know, it was that whole soap opera anime. Yeah. Uh, it was slow paced. So I like slow paced romances that actually build up the characters and let you know who the characters are before it just jumps into, oh, my God, I love you. There was drama. You know, there were reasons she couldn't date. She wasn't allowed to date. Her parents were super strict. He was coming from his mom had remarried. Uh, he wasn't really friendly with his stepdad, and she was trying to make things work. Uh, then the main girl ends up getting sick. Ooh. And we're not sure she's going to survive the series. So it was some drama to it. Okay. I gave it a seven. It was drama. It was good drama. Okay. So it, it, wasn't, was, it wasn't fine. It was better than fine. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I gave it a good. Okay. I said, hey, this is a good show. It's very slow paced. Um... I like slow-paced romance dramas that really develop character over over romance. They, you know, they're going to give me real, real relationships. Yeah, and that's what they did by taking their time with it and developing the characters. They built real relationships that you actually believe could happen in real life. <laughs> really good show. I might have to give it a watch just to uh, fill some dead air, though. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, man, it's a good. Sh- I I liked it. Like if you, I'm going to redo my top romance. Yeah, this will make it. Okay. It can make it. It's a modern day. We can talk about modern that. Modern day one. I can bring it in. Um, Friday nights. Go on. There was only one show on Friday nights that ruled them all. Go on. Uh, <laughs> 18F. <sighs> and the other show I watched on Friday nights was Vatican Miracle Examiners. Uh, 18F so good. 18F, Let's get into 18F. 18F is probably the third of my top three. I'm not surprised the it's number not three, number one. But it's in the top three. So I'm, I'm, so, I'm really surprised that's not number one. The I didn't sound, say it wasn't. Let's look at this. Let's let's think about this. Okay, one, I have been listening to the 18F soundtrack radio that I made on Google Play, and literally every other song is Teddy Lloyd, and I've never been less upset in my life to hear so much of the same artist. Teddy Lloyd is a fucking genius. And we had a chance to go see him, and we didn't. Yeah, we fucked up. We had a chance to big see time. him play San Japan, and we didn't go. Fucked up big time. Yeah. Rip. And I was aware he did the song. Uh, I was aware, and I just blew the whole concert off. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. We got uh, every day for the rest of our life to regret it. Oh, yeah. We're going to see him. <laughs> we're going to catch him, though. We're going to catch him. That's our future plan. Yeah. Um, 18F, let's break this show down. Probably one of the most fascinating anime I have seen in quite some time. Yeah. Every single episode didn't seem to correlate with the next and none of them honestly seemed to really correlate up until 10, I think it was. Episode, they tied it all together. Episode 10 like, is whenever the real world started to get tied in. Episode 11, they fought the last witch. And then episode 12, they finished off the season. Yeah. So last three episodes is whenever everything actually started tying up. Before that, every episode almost was its ind- own independent story. And I, 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 honestly, every single episode, like episode one, two, three, every single episode after finishing, I was like, what? Who put mushrooms in my fucking soup? And B, uh, what the hell happens next? Like every episode had me wanting to know and wanting for more. So it did a damn good job. And like, I don't know, I, this, this show is definitely in my top three for a reason. Like the every single anime, every single episode's animation is different. They're all done by different directors. Every single episode is a different in song. Most of the show, most of the episodes have a the female who the female actress, uh, the VA who plays the main woman of the episode, actually sings a song for us at the end. Um, the episodes that don't have witches involved, or just I guess the witch wasn't a singer. Um, Teddy Lord just makes a badass song for the end. But mm-hmm. yeah, like there's so much good about this show. I could not like right now. I cannot think of one negative aspect at all like even even though none of the episodes up until episode 10 were tied together i can't i can't fault it for that let's go ahead and it, talk about it, it let's get into detail it did so. that on purpose so haruto is a young man who wakes up in a dream world yep realizes he's in the dream world mm-hmm. and not quite sure why he's in the dream world yep and then somehow Perfect. while he's in the dream world he comes across a woman who has some superpowers yeah some crazy superpowers and you find out when this white-haired girl shows up to tell him hey she's a witch 
And he goes, what the hell are witches? Well, they're super powerful beings and they're women who in the real world are suffering from a sickness called sleeping beauty syndrome. Yeah. And these are women who. It's a key had, term for coma. It's a, that's basically <laughs> it is. They, they would, these women had something traumatic happen to them in the real world. They would go into a coma, sleeping beauty syndrome. Yeah. But in the sleeping beauty syndrome in their sleep, they had these. The dream world was being fucked up. Yeah, you know what's crazy too is not every witch was a malevolent like um, the figure skater. That was not a malevolent witch. She just wanted to live out college. That's yeah. all that episode was. And no, then, not everybody was malevolent. And but then everybody was dealing with the real witch issues. of first love. Yeah, that was the saddest episode. I literally felt the tears welling up in my eyes, and I was just like, "No, don't." Do it. Anime has not made you cry yet. Hold your fucking shit. Yeah, no, that was a- that episode literally hurt me, and it has. It also has my favorite ending song, just because I read the lyrics and I listened to that song, and I actually before they put the full album on Google Play, mm-hmm. I had a radio station dedicated just to that one song. <laughs> Bro, let's like, talk about this. The things these women dealt with were bullying, food, eating bullying, disorders, eating disorders. We have. Um, um, there was the one chick who watched her whole family get fucking massacred. Yeah, she watched her family be killed. And I mean, there was these women were dealing with issues that we, these are issues where we talk when, you know, not your family being killed, but we talk about bullying and eating disorders and, and sexual abuse and mental abuse. Women face these issues every day. You know, the one episode I didn't really understand how it worked out was the episode with the deaf girl who was in the rock band. The one that got trapped in the building. Yeah. I didn't, I, I she guess. She couldn't get it. They, yeah. It took so long to dig her out because she couldn't. Yeah. I just didn't understand like how Professor K saw her in the real world. Or I didn't really understand that part. That was the only episode that confused me. Mm-hmm. But even so, like, I still loved it because the end song was badass. The animation was pretty awesome. And the kind of, the story kind of made some sense. It was oh, just yeah. like, I didn't understand why K saw her in the real world or whatever the hell. And then the eating He dis- got lucky on that one. The, the the eating disorder girl, I don't think she was ever actually a sleeping beauty because Professor K was eating her curry while in between But when she slept at night, that's when she yeah, was she I was think, having issues. Yeah, cuz she would go to bed after fucking di- you I know, think, eating 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 blah, 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 and then yeah. go to sleep and then now she's a like candy crazy I think little she was, if she'd have kept on that path, I think you know we know with bulimia that she was headed toward either her death or yeah. she was going to be in that That was coma. probably like the first episode that I was like, holy shit, the show is talking about some real shit. Oh, no, man. I knew by the second episode, they're talking about some real well, shit. Well, the second here. episode is like, mur- your family's murdered in front of you. That, that was ha- a that serious shit. No, though. it was serious, but that doesn't was, happen like every day. Yeah, man. Like when, they, bulimics did, when everywhere. they did that one, I was like, this shit is getting serious, man. Because I was afraid the rest the whole of the show was going to be like is that. revenge. <laughs> is it is it easy to forgive? Is it always right to forgive? Should we be granted the ability not to forgive the people that hurt us the most? They were asking some deep ass questions in that. Yeah. And it was framed by the episode of a girl watching her family be murdered and her having the chance to kill those killers. Yeah. That was some serious shit they dealt with. And I was just like, man, this show is not taking easy sh- questions. They're not taking easy jump shots. They're, no. they're really asking you to go on a journey and ask some tough questions about where do you stand on certain issues. I think that the hardest thing about episode three, the uh, Witch of First Love, I think it was episode three. Mm-hmm. I think the hardest thing about that one is that she she didn't necessarily have a issue so much as she had never been in love and she was dying. Like, that was just sad to me. Like, that really broke my heart. Oh, dude, it sucked. The ending was so bittersweet, too, because she was like, she finally got to confess and she, like, he, like, hugged her and then poof. And I was like, ah. You're just going to ruin that shit for her, huh? You're just going to spoil We've that. Been spoiling other shows this entire yeah, time. Yeah, we really have. But episode three, I didn't say a lot about ATDF. I'm just giving you, it's, I wholeheartedly recommend this show. I would, if you skipped it this season, you go find this shit and watch it right literally, now. Literally, I would give it a 10. I don't see a single reason why I shouldn't. Like, I cannot give it, I cannot call out a single fault in the entire show. Some people might not like it because the story is, like, kind of uh, segmented. But I didn't, I did not fault it for that because it needed to be segmented because it didn't, you could not fucking predict how the hell that was going to end. I gave it an 8. You gave it an 8? I did. I gave it an 8, a very good. Yeah. I, I don't give, I couldn't even give it a 9 for great. Although I feel bad for not giving it a 9 because it was pretty damn amazing and and i'll probably never see another show like it oh god no not for a while every show was directed by a different director every show had a different animation style 
even better. It's, Every song had a different ending song. It's no other anime this season also had the same kind of source material. This game, or not a game, this anime was sourced from a fucking game that's literally like a match three plus. Like Bejeweled. No, it kind of, it's like Bejeweled. It's like if you, it's like Bejeweled if you could drag over all the same color jewels and then pop them and then your guys attack the enemy. That if it, if Bejeweled is like that, yeah, I've seen games like that. It's isn't there a game on Pogo like that? There's the, a game, the, the Cookie something something. That Dungeons and something game is like that where you match three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Attack yeah. Up. It's exactly like that, except yeah. it has a really good story. I've played the hell out of that game. Recommend it a hundred percent. It literally the first witch you fight is the first witch that he encounters in the anime, and she says same the same fucking shit. Like this is my game world. What are you doing here? Nee, nee, nee. Yeah, it's really wow. good. It's really good. It's a really good game, and I'm not a big fan of like simple puzzlers, but it's a simple puzzler with RPG. It's like Puzzles and Dragons. That's exactly what it is. Okay. It's puzzles and Dragons, but good. My other show. Uh-huh. Vatican Miracle Examiners. You were talking about this really, like, holy, really shit. positively early in the season. I've too. turned some people on to this show. Yeah. I've not heard one person come back and say it sucked. Yeah. Nobody I've turned on to this show came back and complained. Vatican Miracle Examiners was like two. Vatican priests get a case every week. Well, they got a case, and then they have to go prove if it was a miracle or if it was faked. And it wasn't like the miracle of the week like Scooby-Doo. It was like the first four episodes are their first case. It's kind of like Monogatari where the arcs kind of encompass, or the character uh, character story mysteries encompass a few episodes. Yes. Okay. So these were some deep writing. Uh, then you get another story arc, then it go to the next story arc. And they were not easy story arcs to digest. <laughs> they were some fucked up things they were dealing with. Did they have Way any? out there. I, I'm gonna, I, I think I'm going to add this to my like backlog, too. Please do. Yeah. What's it on? Uh, Don't say strike. I'll be quiet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, rip. I'm waiting for that to come to home video. Yeah, I will be buying it. I will be buying it. It, it was that good. Uh, it was really, really good. I was shocked by how well it was done. I bet you could just buy it digital through Amazon, actually. You could. Probably just, I mean, I won't do it now, but whenever you I need have. get some money? Yeah. Mm. What's next? Wait, well, actually, what did you rate that? Because we didn't really talk about that one at all. Cause <laughs> I gave it a seven. You gave it a seven? All I right. did give it a seven. It was really good, really great. Uh, very... I would have liked to have seen some more. Yeah. I'm really hard, though, man. I think I'm starting I'm not, to become a critic. I, say, I wouldn't say you're hard. I would say that you're very critical. I am. Which is good. That's not a bad quality to have. I'm just like easy going with my ratings. I'm just like, if I loved it and I can't fault it, it's a 10. Just like yeah. your name, I could not fault it. I, I had that whole bullshit like rating all the fucking different things and averaging it, but I don't think that that was fair to it. I still think your name's a, a 10. I gave your name a 10. Even Koei no Katachi, I gave a 10. I gave it a 9. Yeah. Yeah. Silent Voice? Yeah. I gave it a 9. Yeah. I did. It I was- give out 10s all day. Like, just. You oh, get, I'm, yeah. I'm the Oprah fucking 10. Yeah, you get a 10. You get a 10. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm kind of critical, but I really did give your name a 10. Yeah. I hadn't given a 10 out in years when I gave that one a 10, so it was shocking. Um, Saturday days. I'm about to tell you. My Saturday, of course, My Hero Academia. Good guy, yes. Second season. And uh, Fox Spirit Second Matchmaker. half of second season. Yeah. So they they like they like gave us that hiatus between uh, spring and summer. That's true. They did. So... Yeah, I got a uh, Fox Spirit Matchmaker. Let me just start with that. <laughs> I talk so much shit about this show to y'all. Yeah, you do. And you secretly love it. I hate it. Just like this you show. just like you hid that show from us. Yeah, I hated this show. Like I tell people it is the pacing's terrible. I think we talk about it on the Oliva episode of uh, Anime Roundtable. Yeah. I was like, it's one of the worst shows I've ever seen. The pacing's terrible. The, it's, it makes no sense. It's dumb. It jumps. It doesn't have any rhyme or reason. I don't, I, I just blah, 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 blah. I ended up watching the entire series. <laughs> I secretly loved this show. I secretly See, that, loved that, this that show. That one should be your... Um, it was my guilty pleasure. That one should be your guilty pleasure. It was, because... As much as I talked about it, how terrible it was, the writing, the pacing, I watched every freaking episode. Yeah. I feel like that one's definitely more more, uh, more deserving of the coach's guilty pleasure of summer 2017. It probably because, should be. I gave it a four. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had to rate it. I gave it a four. It is bad. Oh, uh, that's it hilarious. Is, the show is just bad, bad, bad. It's know, bad it, on top of bad. You know what's fucked up is I tapped out after episode one. 
Everybody I know with common sense tapped out after episode. I was one. like, this makes no sense. I don't want to see this dude. Even if she, I don't give a fuck if this fox spirit chick is like four hundred. She looks like she's seven. Mm-hmm. She acts like she's seven. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, it was cute. Like mm-hmm. it was. They had a uh, plenty of Moai moments, you know, and like if if it wouldn't have just been so like terribly choreographed, like like out of like I don't understand. One, I don't understand how the hell that first episode even was like. Somebody was like, "This is a perfect plot. This makes so much sense. Let's do this." Because dudes like in the middle of a fucking stage, chick just falls from the ceiling. All this shit starts happening. Now they're outside. People who were inside who made meant something to the freaking story aren't there. People who are outside did not exist before everybody else went outside. Like they tried to introduce so much shit in this episode one. They got they didn't inter, they didn't talk enough about so much shit in episode one. Like I just couldn't do it. It just did no, not it make was shit a for sense. Terrible episode. Did not make shit for sense. It was it it was a terrible episode. I'm not gonna say that people can't like it. I'm just gonna say I did not. And like here's it. the thing: it was a Chinese anime. Yeah. That was then translated to Japanese. A Chinamation. And it was terrible. Like, can I can I trademark that Chinamation? You can. All right, trademarked. Yeah, because it was terrible. That company that did it has been known to make some mm-hmm. Howliners. I think is their name, the company name that made it. They they've they've made some bad anime. Mm. They're known for bad anime. In fact, we talk about that on the Oliva episode. If you guys haven't listened to it, go listen to that anime roundtable with us with the Oliva brothers. It was it was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. So uh, bad I couldn't watch it past one. You know, and I, here's my problem. I try to give everything a three to five episode rule. Yeah. But by the time you get to the fifth episode of this, you're just like, I gotta see how this train wreck ends. Yeah. And then I started liking it. <laughs> like I started liking it by the seventh you had episode. I was Stockholm like Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> Like, I'd start watching it by the seventh episode, and I was like, this is cute. <laughs> God, that's stupid. Why did they do that? This is the worst dialogue ever. Oh, God, I can't wait till you episode eight comes home. You literally got anime Stockholm Syndrome from I that. did. That's they, hilarious. They, you know, fell in love with my captor, and they punished me. Um, oh, shit. What, my Hero Academia, we're not going to go into I'm going to just say, okay, season two was a freaking eight. See, we can't go into it. Simply because of how fucking long we would be talking about this. They covered two, no, three, two, three, three separate arcs, I believe, throughout mm-hmm. the season two. Um, yeah, no, we can't, we can, we can make, go into it in a shonen episode later or something. But literally, like, I enjoyed the fuck out of this show. I did not, I could not wait for the next week's episode. I couldn't bear to see it end because I want to see the next arc. I want to see the freaking summer camp arc. Mm-hmm. But we're going to wait for that because they already announced season three. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to worry, guys. Everybody chill the hell out. We're getting season three. It's not like freaking ReZero where we're going to be waiting forever and Katakawa's never going to deliver. Katakawa, I hate you. I'm just kidding. I love you. Um, <laughs> I really, like, that is a love-hate relationship. I love their anime so much, but I can't stand that I don't get more of it. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure that we have Konosuba season three actually confirmed-ish. It's on my anime list now. Oh, okay. So it has made it? Yeah. I don't know if it's just like a rumor ed- edition or what, but They're at least we... good about not putting rumors up. What? They're, yeah, they are. So, I don't know. We're getting season three of My Hair Academy. That's the academia. That's the important part. I would also give it an eight. We could actually do a whole episode on this show. We really could. Yeah. I would love that show. Yeah. Really like, well written. Really good. I don't... I think that show has made me like Shonen, but the reason I like it is... It's not like Dragon Ball where it takes seven fucking episodes to do one fight. Their fight episodes take at least two or three episodes at max, and we're on to the next story. Yeah. I mean, see, um, yeah, I mean, the major fights, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, And there aren't very many throughout the show. Most of it's like kind of more, not one punch man kind of quicknesses, but pretty quick. Because they literally have their own one punch man. Mm-hmm. Like, uh... All Might is pretty much a one-punch man of sorts. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, let's get on to the next one. <laughs> okay, so what I did on Sundays is on Sundays I went back and I made that my day where I watched old series. And here's where you're going to make me jealous. Hmm? So here's where you're going to make me jealous. Okay, so Sundays I watched. I went back and said, okay, let me knock out everything. Uh, Little Witch Academia. Jealous. I did all 26 episodes. So jealous. The uh, show looks so cute. Future Diary. Oh, yeah. I've never sat down and watched it. I've finally sat down and watched it. That's on it. my list. Did it. Uh, get Suyobi no ta- Tawawa. That's, isn't that the one that I told you to watch? Yeah, that's I-Chan. 
Which is, I'm going to say this. It is, uh, it is basically a slice of life about a salary man who meets a high school girl on the subway and they form this relationship that, you know, they always seem to be on the commuter train with each other. And it just, they form a relationship and they're talking. So you see stuff from his life, stuff from his boss's life, stuff from her life. And it's just this weird friendship where he's like kind of a big brother. Yeah, like he protects her from from molesters from on molesters. the train. And then one day she pays him. She's like, she's kind of really big chested and her shirt busts and the button comes off and she gives it to him and she said, remember me. <laughs> and he's like, what's that from? She said, my button's just busted off my shirt. Remember me. And she gives him a different button. And it's just this weird relationship. So it's never sexual. It's yeah. just. It's not suggestive either. It's yeah, just, it's just really a weird, weird place. But I went through all these damn episodes. And I get through it and didn't realize she always told him her name was, you know, like some something Chan, right? And then in the last episode, you find out, she says, well, they've gotten bigger, so I guess you can call me I-Chan. So what she was saying was her bra size the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so H-Chan was really, I'm wearing H-cups. Now I'm an I-cup. Yeah, she got some tickle bitties. She really did. And I was like, Really? I got to that, and that was the payoff on the last last episode. Was that was the payoff? Was her name was based on her bra size, and I was like, I fucking hate you, internet. I do. I fucking hate you. But it was actually kind of cute. Slice of life. Nothing. I mean, you could watch it with your kids in front of you. Yeah. Uh, I watched all of a Awari Monogatari uh, season one and two. So jealous. And Gurren Lagann. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I watched Gurren Lagann so for the happy. first time. I will not lie. I love mechs. And everybody kept saying, you love mech anime. You have to watch Gurren Lagann. And I kept going, really? And they were like, "It's you love mechs. I was like, yeah, I love mech anime. And they went, you have to watch Gurren Lagann. I was not disappointed. I swear, Gurren Lagann is like the best combination of so many genres. Romance, drama, mech. Um, I want to say, what else is there? Uh... It was definitely had some shonen overtones. Yeah, yeah, shonen. Um, no, it was fantastic. It had some even even further than shonen. It had seinen kind oh, of yeah. shit. Like it was very like adult oriented yeah, in a lot yeah. of places. Like it had some real ass conflict, and it was just and there was, was death. It was a black. Yeah, it was like Game of Thrones. Like we will kill a favorite character, and yeah. we don't give a fuck how you feel about yeah. it. Yeah, it was a uh, that I've, I've said before a couple times. That's the anime. That kickstarted me back into watching anime as much as I do now. Like, yeah, that's a great one. I can see why. If not, if I hadn't just like been perusing Netflix and just randomly found Gurren Log, and I was like, oh, this this looks pretty cool. Let's give it a shot. And then binged fucking six episodes in a row, and I was like, I can't stop. I need more. And then that 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 basically kickstarted everything. And then here we are today. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a good one. I uh, I will tell you this, man. Um, there was only one series I watched in all of the summer, and I tapped out. What's that? I watched two episodes, and I quit. Tell me, tell me, tell me more. Baruto. Bur- <laughs> Baruto. That damn fanfic? Naruto's son gets an anime. Yeah. I watched two episodes of that bullshit, and I tapped out. That's like- and here's the thing. We work with people who are hardcore about it, and have, and they're up to date. And they keep telling me, you got to come back. You got to get past those first five episodes. I mean, I tapped out on the second one. See, I can't legitimately do that just because I tapped out on Shippuden. I watched all of the original Naruto. I don't know why the hell. I think I was like 13, maybe, maybe 14. That's why you did it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, Naruto, la, la, la. And I finished all of that shit. I watched most of the movies, which are kind of Shippuden era anyway, because it's like Naruto and his like, you know, slightly like taller outfit. Mm-hmm. And then Shippuden, I ended up tapping out on. Not because I didn't want to keep watching. Shippuden had some good ass sh- episodes, but it was, had like twice the number of episodes as the original run and probably three times the filler. Yeah, no. It was like Bleach. I, it was you pre- know how it was like I told Bleach you with that's ninjas. my problem with Bleach, I gave it to it, but I get tired of all that filler. Yeah, it's, it's like a problem that plagues the shonen genre. It was like Bleach. Naruto, uh, DBZ, One Piece, like shonens have some weird inherent need to fill up all of these, all of the space instead of just like, I, I, I don't know. I get One Piece because it's not necessarily filler so much as this is literally the fucking story and it takes them this long just to do one stupid thing. I get that. That's One Piece. 
shows where they actually have to make filler because they're not caught up to the manga, just fucking wait. That's what everybody else in anime does. They wait. They you know? wait until there's enough out there. They don't just like, okay, guys, uh, we got this money line around, so instead of making some new IP or making some money elsewhere, let's just fucking make up some shit and put some more fucking Shinigami out there. Like, why? Exactly. Bro, why? Same thing with the fucking DBZ. Like, well, I don't know. I can't I think, watch DBZ. Like, everybody's like, you got to watch Super, and I'm like, I don't want to watch it. See, I've been watching some fights from Super, and they get pretty cool, but I'm, I don't really want to see much else. Like, the fights, they're yeah. awesome. I, I watched... On Facebook, I'm part of a DBZ group, and they, like, every fucking week, they post up the last episode's, like, fight scenes and shit. I'm like, oh, cool. And I just watch that for five watch minutes. Watch the fight on the, scenes. On the toilet, done. I'm just like, oh, full fight scene. Done. Yeah. And that, that's all I needed. Yeah, I don't like. I don't need I dialogue. gave up on Shonen because I got tired of it. The only Shonens I watch, let's be real, are Food Wars. Yeah. Which pretty much gets their battles over in two episodes. And then and My Hero. And My Hero Academia. Yeah. Because they get their battles over in two episodes. I like My Hero just because of how awesome the animation is. Like they 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 have the bigger eyes, but they're not necessarily Moe. They got they do a very comic book esque style whenever the like action sequences happen, and they mm-hmm. they feel like a page in a comic book was turned to animation rather than animation right. made comic. So it's really fucking cool to see that. Yeah, I love that show. Those are my two big shows. And those characters right are believable, even though they live in a world of make believe, essentially. Like, it's seriously, like, they have real feelings and stuff, and you start to feel for them and understand them, and except for you know, they deal with their insecurities. I, can't, I cannot understand Kachan. That's the dude with the. Yeah, that's the dude with the. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate him. He's such a fucking hard ass. Like, I don't get your problem, dude. Like, be happy. Your childhood friend that you started to fucking scorn for not being like you. Is now like you, and you hate him. I don't, what I, the hell? Dude? I think his dad just did something to hurt him because he's been hurt. He definitely had something hurt him in the past, and it wasn't. I wasn't our boy. Yeah, something hurt him. Yeah, because he's hurt. Oh, yeah. He is just an asshole all the time. Yeah. So I, I hope they explore that in season three. I want to know what hurt him. What made him like that? I can understand the one kid whose dad was, you know, the flame guy. Yeah. Um. I just I, saw his name earlier today. Tadoriyama? No. No. I saw his name combined with Toblerone, and it was hilarious, and I can't remember what it said. To- to- Damn it. Oh, it. speaking of Toblerone, I watched Neo Yokio. <laughs> I finished Neo Yokio. Uh, I loved Neo Yokio. Bro. You know who else watched it who? and said it wasn't bad? Heard, and he hates everything. He does. Well, Even he not, realized so it wasn't he, that bad. He's not quite angel level, but he's like up there with hate. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing, and I've told everybody this, and I'll say it right now. Neo Yokio would have came on Adult Swim, and we'd be talking about, man, that show is genius. It was just weird, and it was it was aware of its own weirdness. And it was just really a satire of the nouveau rich and the filthy rich and the things that they would do. Yeah. And it was just like, it just ran with that satire. It had a lot of big name actors, uh, you know, whether it was Jude Law or, you know, I think Helen Mirren did one of the Jayden voices. Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith was in there. Jaden Smithin. Yeah, I, I I, think critics, when it first came out, it was like somebody made an anime about Jaden Smith's Twitter account. And I was like, yeah, really? You're pretty much missing the whole pr- point of the show. Yeah. A lot of people have given... I'm starting to see a lot more people coming out positive after they've watched it instead yeah, of waiting for a review. That's, that kind of makes sense, though. Critics critics these days seem to be... And I don't know. I'm a millennial, but I'm about to fucking diss on my own fucking generation. But critics these days for like the popular things, like fucking BuzzFeed and shit, they're just millennials whose blog blew up and now they're on some media source. But that's what it feels like. Like they 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 need the attention. And they really they don't they don't they, they don't dive into something and like find the meaning of something. They're just like looking at it from the surface and they're just like, oh, that was just a crock of shit. Jaden Smith can't be an anime. Me me me. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Yeah, not even gonna lie, that was it. Yeah. I, I loved it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's on Netflix, right? It is on Netflix. I've enjoyed it. I've watched it twice. I've gone back <laughs> oh, and watched damn. it again. So. so that was so actually 21 then this season. Yeah, I guess I did watch Twenty One Series. Technically this Twenty One Series. Yeah, you got me beat by a lot. So I guess we are going long. So let's go ahead and try to knock out our tops. What are your let's top, do it. What are your top three? Uh, if I had to pick a top three, yeah, one, two, and three. You can do three, two, one if you want. What comes in number third? Because that's how you say that. <laughs> number third. <laughs> number third. Uh. Ooh, that's gonna be hard. Number third, 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 third. I'm gonna have to say 18F. Okay, cool. 
18F was just like un- unlike anything I've ever seen. We'll probably never see it again. Mm-hmm. Top three. My right. third favorite. My third is probably, out of everything I watched, going to be Gamers. Like It gave me an appreciation of the rom-com, rom-com genre. Mm-hmm. I'm not super into romance romance so much as I am just... like. I love harems because there's not it's not typically romantic. It's just like hilarious, awkward situation. That's what I love. I love I mm-hmm. love I love the MC being in an awkward situation. But this one was rom com, and all the MCs were all in awkward situations, and yes. it was fucking hilarious. So that's my number three. Okay. Uh, second, my numero dos. See, this is a tough one because I have two that I want to say are my Don't number one. Don't me. Well, I have two that I want to be number one. I have new game. Season two, and I have eighteen if. Those are the two that I'm that are vying for my next two spots. Cause new game, you know me. I fucking love slice of life. I mm-hmm. fucking love Moe. I fucking love girls. I you really love I, game I love, development. I love game development. This show kind of like actually I kind of hate that restaurant. So now that was not in my top three, but but then again my life has turned to game dev. So like, if somebody asked what is Zane really into these days. They would be answered. They would get be, be provided the answer. He likes women. He likes cute anime. He likes game dev. They would have fucking made me new game season two. Yeah. So that one has that going for it. Eighteen F. Well, like I said earlier, was just a fucking trip, and it was a great trip, and I had no faults that I could find in it. I guess I couldn't really find a fault in new game except that there wasn't like the damn Yuri that I wanted. But show show your eyes good enough, I guess. So I don't know if I had to pick a number one. Just based on how much they've influenced me, honestly, 18F, just because of how much it's influenced my daily life, I listen to Teddy Lloyd and music that's like that sound that that show's soundtrack every single day to and from work. On the way here, on the way home after this recording, I'm going to be just jamming out to some badass Japanese EDM. So we're going to break it down. So number three was your gamers. Number three was gamers. Number two was new games. New Season games. two. And 18F and is going to get your number one. Right. My number two goes to Shuri Dury Children. Uh-huh. I could not. <laughs> it was in there. Yeah. It you, was you so freaking. Rom-Com City, man. Rom-Com City. This one here was hilarious. And it appealed. On, the writing was sharp. Everything about it was great. The, the animation was cute. Uh, it was just. You rooted. <laughs> you, you actually got it. I don't know about you, but I actually started to invest in the couples in their daily oh, lives. Oh, yeah, no. Like, I was always like, yeah, you got this, guys. Y'all can do this. You'll be happy forever. Yeah, and one of the funniest things was there was a uh, clip from it where the guy's girlfriend found his porn stash. Oh, yeah. That and was they were about to have sex. Episode three, I think. They were about to, he's about to lose his virginity oh, to his girlfriend. Even better was whenever his mom. And his mom <laughs> walks in on him. That felt so real and uh, so genuine and so awkward, but so beautifully funny and poignant. It yep. was just like, who the fuck writes like that? It was It was so... It was just good. It, it was, was like, so good. Was, and, and and that scene, like I remember all my friends were watching. You saw it. Yeah. And I remember the day you saw it and you were like, what is this show and why am I not watching? I went, that's Shuri Dury Children. You literally, I believe, actually just now quoted me, like even unintentionally or intentionally trying to paraphrase, you literally, I think, just quoted me. I think that I'm was how you sure came that's exactly like, what I put online. Yeah. I was like, what is this show and why am I not watching it? Yeah, I was like, I never forget that. And I was just like, <laughs> sure, you're children, bro. I think James and I both were trying to get you like, you got to watch this crazy. It was it was a sweet little uh, roller coaster. Yeah. And not even like a up and down. It was just like constantly just the extreme like, ah, I love the show. Yeah. Uh, my number one, it, it it was hard for me to pick this. There were two shows that were vying for the number one. It was going to come down to uh, Love and Lies Mm -hmm. and uh, Gamers. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say that after serious debate, (laughs) Gamers is going to get my number one of summer 2017. I feel it. It was so. I went pretty heavy on the rom coms. Yeah. Which I kind of thought was going to happen anyway. Everybody thought that. Yeah, nobody was doubting it. I think a lot of people were shocked that 18F made my number three. I am. 18F I mean, was that good. I mean, 18F, like, I think we both agree that 18F is so fucking unique, and we're not going to see anything like it for a while unless somebody else randomly makes a video game out of, or a video game into an anime. But the last game that made it into an anime was, um, like, not Puzzles and Dragons, but one of those weird, like... Grand Blue Adventures. No, even even more recent than that. It's like, it's 
Monster Quest. Oh yeah, like Monster Quest. And then also Monster Hunter has a chibi anime that's, that's, yeah, that's that was last not last season but spring I believe. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like games are being made in anime, but no fucking game anime is gonna top this one for a long time. I don't think they could make a psychological supernatural anime that's gonna top this. Say one. this one almost was well, some episodes was almost a thriller. Yeah, this. You know what I told some people? It seemed it took a lot of hints from Monogatari series mm-hmm. yeah it took a lot of hints from that show but man they did something so unique and so well with just the animation it is the one thing that if i would i damn near would add it to a list if i wanted to blow your mind and you were jaded on anime yeah i put you on this series and yeah. just you would come back an anime fan yeah no that would yeah i would agree with you 100 percent. yeah uh it was but yeah that's my so i'm gonna break it down 18 if was number three shuri deary children number two and my number one goes to gamers cool so we don't really have much else to talk about i do want to bring up we mentioned early in the season we were going to do a fuck ton of like uh tops of whatever we're not going to do all those tops but maybe we'll do the winter probably not though because it was like it sounded like a fun idea at first and then it required a lot of like thinking and i don't like thinking so oh well, we were going to pick our waifu waifus, of the season. top waifus top conflict top other bullshit top this is bullshit we're just going to do waifus right we're, how about this what why don't we put it on the otaku lounge page on facebook and let the fans vote that i mean that's fine by me i think we already did the waifu one I'm we pretty could, sure we did the waifu one. We could, yeah, we should start just letting the fans vote on it. Yeah, yeah. and we'll and Y'all we'll go there. Us. And if you guys aren't following us or on that page where we talk anime all day with a amazing community of uh, anime fans, come find us on Facebook. Is uh, Team Lift Otaku Lounge? Yeah, Team Lift, and then just search and search for groups on Facebook. Search Team Lift, and then put in parentheses Otaku Lounge. And and you will find you'll us. find us right away. And it's you don't have to ask for permission to join the group. Just come join the community. Just don't be an asshole. Yeah, that's pretty much the only rule. Salt's allowed. Dickery is not. Yeah, you can you can hate an anime and be no salty, salty about either. it, but don't be don't pick on anyone. Don't be an asshole because we will ban you. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and it's a great group, and everybody kind of like we all kind of pick on each other because we're you know we're all really know each other, but it's never gotten mean. Nah. We're never mean. I was almost mean to James the other night, but I was like, no, that's a hurtful thing to say. Yeah, don't don't do it, dog. (laughs) Don't do it. Man, this has been a lot of fun. So how about we do this for winter? Yeah, we'll do this for winter. We'll probably need to come back and give first impressions like we did for summer. Or actually, not winter. Um, You want to do, oh, I mean, fall. We're in fall. (laughs) So we can do our our fall midway picks. Yeah, let's do that, you know. Two, three weeks from now, after, you know, four or five episodes are out, we can start seeing first impressions, what we're, what we're into, what we dropped, all that good shit. Yeah. I can tell you right now, Fox Spirit Matchmaker got a second season. Oh, my God. Don't lie to me. It did. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> it did. I have not watched it. Uh, I have not watched wait, it. Wait, second season in this season? Yeah, basically, they're continuing the story, so. Oh, my goodness. Rip. I know I'm going to watch it. I don't know who I'm trying to lie to. <laughs> I don't know why I'm lying. Man. I'm, like I'm pretending like I'm not going to watch it. I can tell you right now there is one show that's already standing out to me in the fall episodes. Yeah. Uh, there are two. Uh, two. There's two. a show called uh, King's Game. Yeah. And there's a show called Just Because. Yeah. Just Because is a romantic drama. King's Game is a murder game. Yeah. Anime. Yeah. I don't know. I think if I had to say I'm looking forward to anything, it's Blend Us because it looks fucking cute and hilarious. It looks cute and hilarious. And what was the other one? Um, What's the one about the fox girl at the, oh, at the resort? Oh, yes. Um, Kona, two seconds, and I'll find it for us here. It's like starts with a K. Oh, yeah. Kono Hanakitan. That one, so far, does not seem like it's going to be super story heavy. Just mostly a bunch of moe little fox girls taking care of a uh, hot spring. But, yeah, no, I like that one. Oh, and the number one most anticipated anime of the season, Ancient Magus Bride. <sighs> that show is looking good. Bro, so, yes. That first episode was pretty dope. So yes. I'm excited for more. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk about that next time, I guess, for now. All right, yeah. I guess we're out of here. I think that's perfect, man. Uh, so, uh, my name, of course, Coach Silky, my boy Zane. Yep, we out. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Team Lift Otaku Lounge with your hosts, Zane Lopez and Roderick McDaniel. Please join us again next week as we discuss more things about anime and otaku culture. And be sure to follow us on our Twitter pages, at GoTeamLift, as well as our personal pages, at Amelia Sampson's 
and at Coach Silky. Please subscribe to our YouTube page at www.youtube.com forward slash Team Lit. And if you have any questions about anime or otaku culture in general, please drop us a line at GoTeamLift at gmail.com. Thank you so much and have a great week.